Good day, Great Tolls. Welcome to this Friday lesson. Thank goodness it's Friday. Yay. Welcome. Um, before we get started, I just want to quickly tell you that we will be doing trigonometry today. We're going to carry on going through 2D and 3D trig problems, exam, problem, exam paper questions. And then what we're going to do is if we have time, because I know that these trig questions take a while, we're going to move on to analytical geometry and we're going to do circles. OK, because I know that a lot of you struggle with circles. OK, before we do that, I just want to quickly run through how to enroll into the grade 12 mathematics class. So you need to go to your um, browser, whether it be Chrome or Edge or Firefox, and you need to type in www.toenable.com or www.toenable.org. That's the big thing over there, toenable.org. That's all you need to type in. You don't even have to type in the www. OK, then after that, you will get to this landing page, and at this landing page will show you that you need to register. Now, a whole bunch of you have registered, which is awesome, but then some of you have not actually... Sorry, I'm looking to see where my pen is. It's just not working. Oh, there it is. Okay, some of you have registered, but you haven't logged into the class yet or enrolled into the class. So make sure that you do that, please. So let's quickly go through this. The way you do this is you register by putting in your first name, your last name, your email address. You click register. Good, awesome, but not good enough. You now need to go and log in. Once you've logged in, you fill in your email address and your password and you click log in and you will get to this page. Except if you haven't been here before, you'll only have choose subject, progress and results and turn able help online. You then need to click on the big red button, this one here, and it will take you through to a list of all the subjects. You scroll down, scroll down, scroll down until you get to maths. You click onto the maths grade 12, click enroll. The site will pop you back to this page, but now you'll have a beautiful blue button that says mathematics grade 12. Okay. So now what you want to do is you want to know why do you want to do this? Well, because at the end of the 2D, 3D section on TRIG, I'm actually going to set up an assessment. It's an live assessment. What that means is that if you've logged into, enrolled into the grade um, 12 mathematics class, then you will see it says live assessments and, and there'll be a number one year. And then you can do it. And the idea behind that is that you guys have a look at the assessment, you do the assessment, and I have a look at it, and I see, oh, look, 50% of the class, I just get percentages, 50% of the class didn't understand the question on 3D trig that did this. Let me go and do a couple of questions on that to make sure they understand. That's the whole point, okay? Moving on. <clears throat> now, the other reason you want to be here is because if you have, the way you normally get onto this is you'll go to a Facebook link or a Twitter feed link, and you'll see, or an email, and they'll, you'll click onto a link that gets you into the, the site that shows you the video, right? But if you enroll in the class, you will see the thing that says upcoming events, okay? So if you click on that, you'll get to a page like this and it'll list all the lessons, what to be planning to do. You can then view the events, okay? So let's see, this is grade 12 math. You can click here. And obviously, on different days will be different times. That can mean as in Friday is different from all the other days. Click the view event button and you'll get to this. Now in that, the description will tell you what we're going to do. So it'll explain that today, which would be said trigonometry and analytical circle geometry. If that's what you're looking for, then that's awesome. But if you actually want to watch it, you need to click on the open live TV link. And then you get to a page that includes this. OK, so first things first, open feed in a new tab. I would suggest you do because it makes the screen that you're watching bigger. Then you need to click on the big green button. <clears throat> the big green button can be used in two ways. If I'm talking fast, it's because I feel like we need to get on with the trigonometry. So you guys, if you want to, this is what the big green button's for, so get to the live thing. But if you miss anything, you can go back in the same way that you did before and click on the big green button again, and you can watch a recording. And then what's cool about the recording is you can fast forward to the bit that you missed or didn't understand. Okay, so... You can watch a recording if you really want to, like if you missed it, you got sport, you got better things to do on a Friday afternoon. But on Saturday at 2 a.m. in the morning, you want to watch 
something on track, go for it, okay? But what does that mean? That means that this button here, which was that button, this button here, this message studio button, which is this button here, won't work if you're watching a recording. If you're watching it live, you can message me. And that's the whole point as well. We want you guys to message me to tell me about sections that you want to go through. So for example, the reason we're doing circle analytical circles is because I had a request from a student and then I kind of had a look and I saw okay fine and they kind of told me exactly what type of questions they want to go through so that is why we're moving on to analytical circles okay analytical geometry and circles so that's how it works right moving on obviously the message studio button does not work if it's a recording because you might watch this at 3 a.m in the morning because you've got nothing better to do and you're hoping my melodious voice will get you to sleep hopefully not okay right um <laughs> oh oh so you can't message me during the recordings okay but you can message during the live session right so let's get on with trig the real stuff okay so it says in the figure we have got q r and s are three points on the same horizontal plane. So they've kind of done it for you yes, already. I said to you guys yesterday that what I really suggest you do is you color in this bottom bit. You color in this bottom bit. Okay. Then it says there are three points in the same horizontal plane. PS represents a flagpole that is perpendicular to the horizontal plane. So that's 90 degrees over there. That's what perpendicular means in case you missed it. Perpendicular means that you've got 90 degrees, which means this triangle PSQ is a 90 degree triangle, which is awesome. Okay. Now it says determine QS, QS in terms of alpha in terms of beta and in terms of x okay so they want us to use this triangle they want us to use this triangle here q r and s they want us to use that triangle there and grade tools as i've mentioned before please 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 use colors use highlighters to help you see what's going on it always does help okay Right, so then before we did examples where they said prove that such and such equals such and such, and it kind of gave us a hint as to whether we're using the sign rule or the cos rule or the whatever. So <clears throat> now we were just told to find or determine QS in terms of alpha, beta, and X. Okay, which means we need to work out which what we're going to do. Okay, so let's just write this down. First of all, for the right angle triangle, if you've got a right angle triangle, we've got Sokotoa. Okay, but that's only if we've got a right angle triangle. If we don't have a right angle triangle, we can either use the sine rule, and this time we want QS, so we want the side. <clears throat> so it's going to be A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. Or I know the sine rule goes, or oh, sine A over A is equal to sine B over B. But grade 12, if you're trying to find a side, if you're trying to make Q as the subject of the formula, it's always easier to choose <clears throat> the top one where the side is at the top. Whereas if you're trying to find an angle, then you choose the bottom one where the angle's at the top. It's just always easier, but it doesn't matter. You'll get to the same answer eventually. Or there's the cos rule, which is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Okay, now we're trying to find QS, QS in terms of alpha, beta, and X. So do you agree that we've got X and its opposite angle, and QS is opposite alpha? So we can actually use the sine rule. You tend to use a cos rule when you've got two sides and an enclosed angle. Okay, and we don't have two sides and an enclosed angle. We've got two sides, just QS and X. But alpha or beta are not enclosed. That would be that angle there. So we're going to use the sine rule. So we're going to say QS over sine alpha, because that's the angle that's opposite, is equal to X over sine beta, because that's the angle that's opposite, right? Therefore, QS is equal to X sine alpha over sine beta. All I've done is I've multiplied both sides by sine alpha. That gets rid of the denominator here 
and then that becomes x sine alpha over sine beta. Ta da! Okay, now it says hence determine PS in terms of alpha, beta, theta, and x. That's supposed to be theta. Okay, hence determine PS in terms of all these things. Hence means we have to use this. Okay, so now we are looking at this triangle. We're looking at this one because they want us to find PS, which is this side here, in terms of all those things. But they've said hence, which means that we should be using QS. Do you agree? So do you notice that we're now in a right angle triangle? This is a right angle triangle there. That's a right angle triangle. There's the 90 degrees. This is QS. So this is what they want. This is what we've just worked out. So if we look at the right angle triangle and they want it in terms of this angle here, which is that angle there. Okay, so do you agree in terms of that angle, this would be the opposite side and this would be the adjacent side. So if we look at this, which one's got opposite and adjacent? Well, this has got opposite and this has got adjacent. So therefore, these both have got opposite and adjacent. So that's tan. So we can say tan, and I'm going to call this theta, is equal to the opposite, which is PS, over the adjacent, which is QS, but they want PS in the subject of the formula. So we're going to take QS, we're going to multiply both sides by QS to get rid of it. So therefore, PS is equal to QS tan theta, but we worked out what QS was. It's all this. So therefore, we can say PS is equal, I'm just taking it to the other side, is tan theta multiplied by x sine alpha all over sine beta. And there you go. Now, remember what I said to you? I said to you before that you needed to find the bridge. And they kind of helped you. They kind of said to you, determine QS in terms of alpha, beta, and x. So they were saying, they, that's your bridge. Okay, you need to work out that line there. And then you're going to use that in this other triangle, okay? So they kind of gave you the bridge. They gave you what you needed to work out. Okay, guys, I really would suggest that the best way to do these things is to practice. I mean, that sounds ridiculous, practice, practice, but it is. The more you practice, the better you're gonna become. Honest to goodness, you are. And also, don't be scared of colors. Don't be scared of colors. And also, another thing I'd like to suggest to you guys is that even if you're watching this and you're trying to do it with me, I really, really, or if you're just watching it and you're going, yes, 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 okay, that makes sense, then that's great. If you're not shouting it out ahead of me, going, well, obviously this and this and this, you're going to use a sign, or you're going to do this, you're going to do that. If you're not shouting it out ahead of me, then what I would suggest you do is you go and watch a recording of this afterwards, not now, later, when you're busy going through trig. And um, I would pause it at the beginning of the question, like, there okay and then I would try this question for myself the whole of it and then once I've tried it then I would watch the video and see if I got it right because just by watching this video like this and going yes okay yes yeah okay that makes sense it's not the same and you're not going to get the same thing out of it and it's, it's kind of like watching somebody play um, a computer game and then you trying to play the computer game okay 90% of the time it looks a lot easier than it actually is okay so in the diagram below, BC is a pole. There's BC. It's a pole. And it's anchored by two cables at A and at D. Okay. A, D, and C are on the same plane. So for some reason, this line did not come out. So let's just put that line in. And then what we're going to do is color in A, D, and C. So A, D, and C are the ground. Right? A, D, and C are the ground. Angle, a line BD, BC is a pole. And I'm gonna make it a flagpole just so that we can see what we're doing. So there's your flag. Okay, oh, it's got a little cross on it. Okay, the height of the pole is H meters. The angle of elevation from A to the top of the pole is beta. In other words, if I'm standing over here and I look up at my pole, if I was standing over here, and I go, whee, look at the pole. There's my arm. Look at the pole. That is what the angle I'd be looking up at, okay? The angle of elevation, angle ABD, A, B, 
B, D is two beta. So what you need to understand is, and this is very interesting, is that this is in its own little plane. A, B, D is in its own little plane. It isn't vertical, it isn't horizontal, it's in its own little plane, and that angle there is two, BD, two, two beta. And they also tell you that B, A is equal to B, D. So let me put those in color. So you see why it's important to read these things, because you actually get given information. They tell us that B, A, B, A is equal to B, D, B, D. Okay, so in that triangle, in the green triangle, okay, that means that this angle here has to equal that angle. Do you agree? Now it says determine the distance. Sorry, I'm just going to check any more questions. Determine the distance AD. AD. That, they want that. They want this. They want, let's just a highlighter. They want this. In terms of H. <laughs> in terms of H. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to get from this green triangle ABD into this triangle at the back there. Let me change color. Let me make it a, what color should we make it? Let's make it an orange triangle. So, not that that's orange, but you know what I mean. Close enough. Okay, that triangle there. We need to get somehow from the yellowy orange triangle to the green triangle. So what line am I coloring in in both of these triangles? And do you agree that this is my common side? AB is my common side. AB is my bridge. Okay, AB is my bridge because I've colored it in. Yeah, is my green, which is talking about triangle ABD because that's got that line in it. And how do I know that it's not that, not the ground one? How do I know I'm not going to work with triangle ACD? Well, because I don't have anything. I don't have the length of AC. I don't have the length of CD. I don't have any angles in that, but I do have angles in the green triangle and I have angles in the red triangle. So therefore, my bridge, oh, darn it, sorry, where am I? There we go. My bridge, highlighter, and let's make it yellow. Is that line there? That's my bridge. Okay, so that means we need to somehow relate those triangles to each other and get that angle. Okay, so let us work with, first let's work with the yellow triangle, the orange triangle, but I'm not going to write in orange, I'm going to write in blue. So we're talking about in triangle ABC. ABC. We want to relate H to somehow get this side here, okay? But do you agree that we've got a little angle beta there and we know that's right angle? So we can work with sa ka toa sa -ka -toa. Okay, so we've gained to, we've got H, do you agree? We've got beta and we want AB. So if we're looking at beta, with respect to beta, do you agree that this is my opposite side? And this is my hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse, okay? So this is my opposite and this is my hypotenuse. Obviously, I'm looking at sine. So I'm going to go sine of beta. Sine of beta is equal to the opposite side, which is H, over AB. Okay? So now we're trying to solve for AB because AB is our bridge. Okay, do you agree? So we can say, therefore, that AB sine beta is equal to H. All I've done is multiplied both sides by AB, and these are cancelled. But again, remember, I want AB as, my, as the subject of my formula, so I'm dividing both sides by sine beta. So this cancels with this, and you get AB is equal to H over sine beta. Okay, so now I've got this. So ching. Now I want this side. Okay, I've got want this side. So do you agree that we had this is not a right angle triangle? Okay, so we need either we want a side. So it's going to be either a over sine a is equal to b over sine b, or or it's going to be using the cos rule. A squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus two b c 
cause A. Okay, but now what else did they tell us? They told us that AB is equal to BD. So do you agree that this also equals to BD? So do you agree that in the green triangle, so hang on, let me just show you something. We go back to the green triangle. And now we're working on the green triangle, so I want this one. There's my green triangle. Okay. Do you agree that I have got AB? Okay, I've got AB because we just worked it out. We've got BD because AB equals BD, right? And we've got this angle here to B. So what have we got? We've got two sides, an enclosed angle, and we want the third side. We have to use the cos rule. Okay, so we're going to say that AB squared is equal to, and it really doesn't matter which side we go first, AB squared plus B, this is a D, sorry. Oh, hmm, sorry. D squared, BD squared, minus two um, times by AB, times by BD, cos, to beta. Okay. Sure. Wow. Okay. So maybe I need to write this up there and then erase some stuff. So I'm going to write AB is equal to BD, which equals H, hmm, H over sine beta. Right. So let me now erase the blue here. Yeah? Unfortunately, the software doesn't allow me to move my writing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue writing. I'm going to rewrite this at the top so we can see what we're doing and then we're going to work from there. Okay, so let's go back to the pen. So we say that AD squared is equal to AB squared plus BD squared minus 2AB times BD times cos of A, which in this case is 2 beta. Okay, which equals AB squared is H over sine B. So it's H over sine beta all squared plus the same thing, H over sine beta all squared minus 2 times by h over sine beta times by h over sine beta cos 2 beta. Sure, which becomes, do you agree that becomes h squared over sine squared beta plus h squared over sine squared beta minus 2 h squared over sine squared beta cos 2 beta. So what is this? This can be added. So that becomes 2 h squared over sine squared beta, one of them, two of them, minus 2 h squared over sine squared beta times by cos 2 beta. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so do you agree that I could take out a common factor? Yeah, is 2h squared sine squared beta minus 2h squared sine squared beta times by cos 2 beta. Now, a lot of you are tempted, I know, to just subtract them. You can't because this is multiplied. So you need to take out a common factor of 2h squared over sine squared beta, and then goes 1 minus cos 2 beta. Oh, this is a long sum. This is a long sum. Okay, that's cos 2 beta. Okay, now it just says determine the distance of the two anchors in terms of h, but it doesn't say in terms of h and beta. So let's just see if we can do something with this. Okay, so cos 2 beta 
can be broken up into cos squared beta minus sine squared beta, which is 2 cos squared beta minus 1, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared beta. So I think I'm going to replace this cos 2 beta with this bottom one here because then hopefully I'll be able to cancel my sine squared betas because this is at the top. So if I do that, I've got 2h squared over sine squared beta, 1 minus bracket. Do not forget your bracket, otherwise you're going to get this wrong. 1 minus 2 sine squared beta, close bracket. Okay. Now I'm running out of space. I'm going to raise this black bit here so that I'm going to write here. And I'm going to write in a different color so just so that you don't get confused between where I'm at. So let us write in red. So then do you agree this becomes, let's just write here first, 2 h squared over sine squared beta. This becomes 1 minus 1, minus times minus is a plus, 2 sine squared beta. Okay, so do you agree 1 minus 1 goes away? So we left with left equals 2 h squared over sine squared beta multiplied by 2 sine squared beta. And remember that there's an implied one year, just in case you get confused. So yay, these cancel, and 2 times 2 is 4, so you end up with 4 h squared. Ta-da! So, that was quite a long question. It was actually a very nice question. I enjoyed that, but that's just because I'm a bit of a nerd and a geek. Um, grade 12s. Okay, I want you to not be stressed out if you get something horrible and scary like this and just do it slowly. Please understand, and I stress this a lot with most of my students, or with my students. When a teacher comes across a question like this, they may have seen a similar question, but they may not have seen an identical question. So all that they're doing is they're using the rules and they're just going through it step by step using their rules and maybe using a bit of the experience to get out what they would have done. So, for example, I know a lot of my students have gone, oh, but I would have got stuck at this point, or I'd have just left the answer because it says just in terms of H and I've got H. Okay, fair enough, I understand that, but first of all, it says in terms of H and not just in terms of H and beta and whatever. Whereas, if you look at the previous question, let me just go back. If you look at the previous question, it said in terms of alpha, beta, x, in terms of alpha, beta, theta, and x. So the fact that it said in terms of h gave me the hint that I needed to just have h in my answer, which meant I had to get rid of the sine squared beta, which is why I hit out the rules. I brought out the rule that cos 2 beta was equal to cos squared beta minus sine squared beta equals 2 cos squared beta minus 1, which equals 1 minus 2 sine squared beta, okay? And I looked at those and I thought, well, obviously I can't do anything with 2 beta, but I can do something with one of these with beta squares. But I'm trying to get rid of the sine squared, which is at the bottom. The only one that's only got sine squared is this dude here, which is why I tried it. And it worked. Okay, so you need to just not... And I say this seriously. Don't take, I mean, it's very hard to say. It's, it's easy to say, not that easy to do. Do not get intimidated, okay? Do not get intimidated. Just work through it slowly. It does look scary. I mean, I had a student and one of the parents came in and said, it looks like you're writing a different language. And yes, it is a bit scary like that. But don't get intimidated. You can do it. Just take it in baby steps, okay? Right, next question. It says... ABD is a triangle in the horizontal plane, and they've colored it in for us. How nice is that? So they've gone and done this for us. So I'm just going to make sure you understand what I'm saying. I would love it if you guys did this. Okay, you don't have to do it beautifully. You just have to make sure that it's, that you can see that that's a horizontal plane. BC, BC is a pole. Wait a second. I don't know what happened. Where's my pen gone? 
BC is a pole. BC is a pole, again, perpendicular to the plane. So this is at right angles. And they tell you that AD equals BD. How nice is that to them? They tell us that AD equals BD. They say the angle of elevation from A to C is alpha. There you go. And ADB is 2 alpha. There you go. That angle there on the ground is 2 alpha. And it says prove that AD, we want the side, AD is equal to H cos alpha minus 2 sine squared alpha. Minus 2 sine squared alpha. Hmm. Okay, so do you agree that I'm going to get from this triangle, this triangle ABC, into triangle ADB because this is the side we want, we want AD. So therefore, obviously, it's pretty obvious that my bridge is this. This is my bridge, okay? Which means I now need to somehow relate H and alpha to AB. But luckily for me, this is a very nice right angle triangle, so I can use uh, now, I have many students that prefer to use sine rule, whether they're using a right angle triangle or not, and you're welcome to do that. I don't have a problem with it. I'm just showing you how I would do it, okay? So, if I do this, this is going to be the right angle triangle. This is alpha. The opposite side is this side. And this side here, which is the side we want, is the adjacent inside this triangle. So we want the opposite and the adjacent, so that gives you tan. So I can say tan of alpha equals the opposite side, which is H, over the adjacent side, which is AB. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by AB. This cancels, oh, sorry, wrong one. Um, This cancels with this, and you're left with AB tan alpha. Remember, we solved them for AB, so we're going to divide both sides by tan alpha um, times the 1 over tan alpha. So we end up with AB is equal to H over tan alpha. Awesome. Now, so we have tan alpha, which really doesn't get us to a cos alpha over sine alpha. But let's just see what happens. Sorry about the sound effects. So let's just see what happens. Now we've got AB. Okay, we've got AB. Now we've got this side, this side, and two alpha. Okay. Now we want AD. We want AD, which is the same as AB. Do you agree? And if this is two alpha, do you agree that I know what these two angles are? They're the same as well. And they are both, just work it out, it's 180 minus 2 alpha divided by 2. So do you agree that 90 minus alpha? So this side here is 90 minus alpha, and this side here is 90 minus alpha. So I could actually use a sign rule because I've got this side and 2 alpha, and I want this side and I've got 90 minus alpha. So let's do that. So we're going to say, remember the sign rule is A over sine A is B over sine B. And again, I'm using this version of it for the simple reason that I'm using this version of it for the simple reason that um, I need to have the side. I want the side. So if I want the side, I need this version to be at the top, the A to be at the top. It doesn't matter if you do the other way. You will get it out. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Okay, so we're going to say AD over sine of 90 minus alpha is equal to the side we've just worked out is AB over sine to alpha. Okay, you with me? All right. So therefore we can say that AD is equal to AB sine of 90 minus alpha all over sine to alpha. All I did was take that to that side. Okay, I multiplied both sides by 90 minus alpha. But AB is equal to what? AB is equal to this. So I can say that AB is H over tan alpha times by sine of 90 minus alpha all over sine to alpha. 
Okay then. Right, now we need to fix this. Do you agree we've got an H? Woohoo! So we've got the H. Life is good. Now we need to fix the rest of it, okay? So the first thing we need to realize is that sine of 90 minus alpha is a co-ratio, and it's a co-ratio of cos alpha. So this becomes H cos alpha over tan alpha times sine to alpha. Okay. Right. So that becomes H over tan alpha times the sine of 90 minus alpha over sine to alpha. Now, do you agree that tan can be written as what? Tan can be written as sine over cos. So I can go H cos alpha is going to be sine alpha over cos alpha. That's tan alpha. Do you agree? Then, what is sine to alpha? There's only one thing that sine to alpha can be. It can be 2 sine alpha cos alpha. Okay, so this cancels with that. Do you agree? And you're left with H cos alpha all over 2 sine squared alpha. Ta-da! Yay, we got it right. How cool is that? Okay, so... Yeah, like I said, the best thing to do is practice these because as the more you practice, the more you put butter in, the more you can start to see that there's actually a pattern that comes. And that's why I say to you that when teachers do it, sometimes they'll recognize, they'll go, oh, obviously, it's what are these questions again? Okay, they might not exactly know how it's done, that specific one is done, but they recognize and pattern. Okay, so let's look at this one and you'll see what I mean. The corner of a rectangular block of wood is cut off and shown in the diagram. So this is a piece of wood. The incline plane that is ACD, so this is at an angle, okay, is an isosceles triangle. So this side here is equal to this side. Let me, let me, let me, let me do another color. Um, this side here, starting to look familiar, hey, is equal to that side there, which means this angle is equal to that angle, right? Also, they tell us that ACB, ACB, that angle there, is a half theta. So let me just fill that in because it's not very well written. This angle here, ACB, so in the vertical plane, angle ACB is a half theta. And it tells us AC is x plus 3 and CD is 2x. Okay, now it says determine expression for angle CAD in terms of theta. CAD. So they want this angle. Okay, well, that's not too difficult because if you agree this in this orange triangle or the yellowy triangle, do you agree that this angle here, ACD is theta, angle ADC is theta, so this angle is going to be 180 degrees minus 2 theta. That's how hard it is, so we've got that. Now it says prove that cos theta is equal to x over x plus 3. Hmm, prove that cos theta is equal to x over x plus 3. Okay, so do you agree that we've got that this side here is x plus 3? We've got that this is 2x. We've got that this is x plus 3. And we've got that that's 180 minus 2 theta. And since we wanted to find theta cos, do you agree that we can use the cos rule? We can go a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And since we're using theta, I'm going to use this angle here. Let me just highlight it for you. I'm going to use this angle here. So if that is my theta, do you agree that that would be my a side? This would be my b side and this would be my c side. It really doesn't matter, okay? So I'm just going to substitute in. So it's going to be a squared side is going to be x plus 3. x plus 3 squared is equal to my b side, which is 2x squared, plus my c side, which is x plus 3 squared, minus 2 times by my b side, which is 2x, times by my c side, which is x plus 3 
cos theta. So now we need to solve for cos theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this x squared and things onto this side. Okay, do you agree? So we've got x plus 3 squared minus 2x all squared minus x plus 3 all squared is equal to, and let's just leave this bit here, and let's multiply this, this out. 2 times 2 is 4x. So it's 4x times by x plus 3 cos theta. Okay. So do you agree that this becomes x plus 3 squared minus x plus 3 squared goes away? So what are we left with? We're left with minus 2x. Oh, there's a minus there. Sorry. Minus 2x squared is equal to minus 4x x plus 3 cos theta. So now we want cos theta by itself. So I'm going to divide both of these sides by minus 4x x plus 3. And the reason I haven't multiplied these out is because I want an x plus 3 over there. I can see I want an x plus 3 over there. So if I see that, I'm thinking, okay, let's just leave this. So this cancels with this and I'm left with cos theta. If I multiply that out, it becomes minus 4x squared. I'm just squaring everything in the brackets. All over minus 4x times by x plus 3. And it's starting to look very good because minus cancels the minus. 4 cancels the 4. The x cancels the 1 of the x's. And you left with x over x plus 3 is equal to cos theta. Ta-da! Okay then. Right. And guys, there would be nothing wrong if you'd used 180 minus 2 theta and then done the cos rule. You would have got the same answer. It just seems silly to do it that way when you got it. Then that means you have to solve for the special angles and, I mean, solve for the 2 theta, etc., etc. Now it says, now that you are given that x equals 2, calculate the height of the wood. So they want to know the height. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we know that cos of theta is equal to x over x plus 3. Okay, we know that. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to... Oh, no, I don't want to erase all the ink. We're just going to get rid of this. I'm almost out of time. Okay, grade 12, I'm actually going to leave this now. If you can, I would like to challenge you that you do the second part where it says if it is given at x equals 2. And I'll give you the hint. You now need to move into the right angle triangle, obviously, and you need to think, think about ratios for cos of a half theta or cos of the fact that you've got a half theta there instead of a full theta. Think about that. Okay, grade 12, I hope you have an awesome, awesome weekend and I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Cheers.